Todd Browning's 1932 cult classic film, Freaks, was controversial and banned in several countries for over 30 years. The film pretty much killed Browning's career as a director, however became widely popular in the 1960s, which shows how much ahead of its time it really was. In this video, you'll learn about filmmaker Todd Browning, the production of Freaks, and the legacy left behind. Todd Browning was the perfect filmmaker for a movie that featured a circus sideshow. Browning was always fascinated with the circus, and at 16 he left home to join. Browning became part of the show, with many different duties like Barker for the sideshow, singing, dancing, contorting, and for a time clowning for the Ringling Brothers Circus. He then toured as a vaudevillian and, for a time, performed in blackface. Vaudeville led to an acting career and eventually directing, writing, and producing films. Most notably, 1931's Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. The film was the first talking adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel. Dracula was a commercial and critical hit that opened the door for a risky next film. The first actor cast in the film was Harry Earls as Hans. Harry had worked with Browning on the film The Unholy Three and was actually the one who brought the story Spurs to Browning's attention. Harry's sister Daisy was cast as Frida as for the rest of the freaks, they were scouted in sideshows across the country. Peter Robinson, the human skeleton, Olga Roderick as the bearded lady, Francis O'Connor and Martha Morris, the armless wonders, and the conjoined twins Daisy and Violet Hilton. Referred to as pinheads in the film were Zip and Pip, and Schlitzie, a male named Simon Metz, who wore a dress. Also featured were the intersex Josephine Joseph, Johnny Eck, the legless man, who at one time was part of the Saw Man in Half illusion, the completely limbless human torso, most known for rolling and lighting a cigarette with only his mouth, Elizabeth Green, the stork woman, and Cuckoo, the bird who is most remembered for the scene where she dances on the table. All of these actors were part of the circus at one point or another. Browning convinced MGM to buy the rights for the story Spurs and produced the film loosely based from the story. The script was shaped over five months and shooting started in November of 1931, with a 24-day shooting schedule. Some of the freaks created quite a stir at MGM Studios and were not allowed to eat in the commissary. So MGM constructed a tent to separate them from the average-looking people. Some of the more normal-looking freaks were able to stay and eat with the others. It's a bit poetic looking back in a way due to the narrative and theme of the film. Browning made the beautiful people the villains and the freaks the heroes of the story, which was a stark difference than Hollywood movies of the 30s. He humanized people with disabilities and reminded the audience that these were people with real feelings and lives. He also made a point to show the bond the freaks had with each other like an extended family. The bearded lady can have babies. The Siamese twins can get married. These are real people, not just attractions. In January of 1932, MGM held a few test screenings. 
Some people reportedly got ill, some fainted, and some just plain ran out of the theater. It was reported that a woman was blaming the film for her miscarriage. Due to the audience reaction, MGM cut the film from 90 minutes to just over an hour, without any consent from Browning. One scene in particular that's been lost is the castration of Hercules, and at the end of the film, him singing with a falsetto voice. The scenes cut are considered to be lost forever. Even with the cuts, the film still garnered a negative response, and the film was considered a box office bomb. Browning's career never really managed to come back from it. Freaks is now widely considered among director Browning's best films. The film's growing esteem among critics traces back to the early 60s, when it was rediscovered as a counter-culture cult film, particularly among European audiences. It was screened at the 1962 Venice Film Festival and shortly after it was shown for the first time in the United Kingdom having been banned there since 1932. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, the film was regularly shown at midnight movie screenings in the United States. In 1994, Freaks was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry, which preserves culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant films. It is also listed in the book of 1001 Movies to See Before You Die. Freaks has inspired two unofficial remakes, She Freak in 1967 and Freak Show in 2007. It also served as a major inspiration for the fourth season of the television series American Horror Story, titled Freak Show. It's unfortunate that Browning wasn't able to see the impact and love for the film after all these years. He died in 1962, right around the time the film was starting to get around to a new generation who could truly appreciate it. So what do you think of the movie Freaks? Leave us a comment below and check out some of these other videos from the review.